All right, to quote my buddy Xavier, I'm going to go on a rant real quick. Now, this may not be the one that you expect. You're probably expecting a hot take on Batman or some shit, but I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to throw you for a loop. Well, not really cuz you're going to see the title and shit, so that's so never mind on that actually. But here here here's the deal, right? So uh, Harry Potter. I'm going to talk about Harry Potter as my first subject for this format. Now, the reason is because uh, I don't care too much about it, so I don't care if I end up coming off like ignorant about it. The other, the other topics I kind of want to talk about, I want to actually think about them before I start speaking off the cuff about it. And really, uh, uh, you know, sound intelligent about it. Incredible. But this one, I don't really care. It's just fucking Harry Potter, you know, it's just whatever. Now, you may not expect me to be into the same shit that tween girls are into. And generally, I'm not. I wonder if you could hear that truck going by or not. But, uh, yeah, so there was, you know, I... I was one of those kids that grew up when those books were coming out, and uh, I enjoyed them. And what was interesting is they got, uh, I don't know if I would call it mature as it went along, because maybe in a superficial sense, it's probably more apt to say that they got darker as they went along. Um, and, you know, I, I actually read them the whole series, uh, more than, more than one time all the way through, but the last time I actually did that had to be, you know, middle school or something, so I'm just going off of memory, and this is what I mean, I don't mind sounding ignorant about this topic, it's just, to me, this is just one of these whatever things, and I had a stray thought occur to me. The other ones are like, you know, are gonna be comic book related and whatnot, and those are like, you know, I regularly... Uh, analyze that subject matter, so if I'm going to start spouting off about it, I don't need to be called out in the comment section. But this one is, uh, this one's just kind of whatever, light-hearted kind of stuff. So, to me, one of the things that always kind of stuck out a little funny to me about the Harry Potter story is the, um, the, the romance angle. And it seems to me that it should have been Harry and Hermione that ended up together at the end and not Ron and Hermione. To me, that doesn't gel as much. And part of that maybe is because they don't set it up a whole lot. I'm not going to say it's not set up at all. I'm not going to make that claim because there was... I don't remember if it was the penultimate book or... Um, the fourth or fifth one. I don't remember at what point they all, you know, start. I think I believe it's around Order of the Phoenix where like relationships start happening. But they're, the, you know, towards the latter portion of the series, they do start doing stuff where like Ron starts like dating this girl who, you know, and, and like makes out with her, and it kind of Hermione seems to get upset about it, and there's also like. You know, this moment at the ball where Hermione shows up all nice and, like, with with the dress and whatnot. And I think, like, you know, there's a little bit of drama on Ron's part there. And, and um, but generally it just, like, it, it kind of does, it, it doesn't really have that great of a foundation. And when it shows up in book seven, then, like, literally even Harry is taken aback by this development. And... It's just weird, and it, it 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 doesn't it doesn't seem earned. And part of that is, I guess, you know, I I think we're left to kind of fill in the blanks. And part of this speaks to like what I perceive as a character flaw with Harry is that he's kind of you know self-involved, and we don't really spend a lot of time you know checking on his friends' lives. They're not you know he's not really asking what's going on with them. He's just kind of busy brooding about what's going on with him, and then, uh, y you know, 
you know, we don't get a chapter from the or two from the point of view of any any of the supporting cast. Really, there's occasional tangents, sort of to that effect, where we follow other characters for a little bit, but it ultimately is plot related. And again, I'm not gonna knock that. I mean, plot needs to come before character, otherwise you don't have a story. Um, but they but they they go hand in hand is more accurate to say. It's kind of like with comic books where it's like, well, which is more important, the, the, the writing or the drawing? And the answer is yes. And that's, that's what it is with plot and character as well. But if you put a gun to my head and force me to pick one, I'd rather... You know, I, I feel like the plot is the real substance of what's going on. Because, you, you know, there are plenty of pieces of media where it's, you know, quote-unquote character-driven, and that's supposed to be the appeal of it, but then it doesn't, you know, it, it's just, it's just shit. It's like, what the fuck am I even, it's like, and people are like, oh, it's so good, and it's like, well, I mean, I guess these people, these fictional people have distinct personalities, but, but uh, you, know, you know, what's actually going on here, there's no point A to point B, uh, but I digress. So, uh... So I guess I have to. I guess I have to continue kind of making a case for this. But so the the first thing that sticks out to me about is that it kind of falls, you know, beyond the fact that it doesn't really seem fleshed out or earned. Really, like I'm not gonna just straight out make the claim that it's not set up because, as I said, that there there are at least two instances, maybe three. I guess like I guess in the when they're all camping in the woods in the final book, there's some I guess implied. You know, Shit, but it's it's like mostly them arguing or upsetting each other, and throughout the whole thing, Ron kind of like picks on her. And I guess there was that one instance uh, where Ron defends her against Draco, calling her uh, a slur, which is like. Uh, but here's the thing: like you could also just read that as him being a loyal friend, and you could also, you know, like supposedly. You know, because Harry grew up with all the muggles, he's ignorant to a bunch of wizard speak still. But although, yeah, although in all fairness, if someone like if someone rocked up to one of my friends and called them a mudblood, I don't think that you really need context for that one. I don't think you need to sit there and go, "Well, wh- hang on, hang on, what does that mean, wizard tongue?" It's a, that one seems pretty. Pretty clear that is, at the very least, it should be obvious that this is an extremely derogatory insult. It does, <laughs> you know, that, and this is this comes down to like if I were to critique Harry Potter overall, J.K. Rowling is kind of uh, kind of phones in some of the terminology and shit like that. So if it was a more if it was a more obtuse word that Draco used or like the it was more subtle and it would catch someone like Harry who's not used to wizard shit off guard and it would make sense that he kind of is on the sidelines of this and was like well but even like contextually he should be able to gather like well I don't know what he said but it was you know obviously it's mean so it was just kind of Harry just you know being narcissistic, and you know, why don't you step up for your friend? I, you know, like, doesn't take a, doesn't take a rocket scientist. You know, what the, you know, what the hell are you letting him, what, you, what the hell are you letting Draco shoot his mouth off for? Like, you, do you, like, do you even need, like, it's Draco. Whatever, whatever comes out of his mouth is gonna be something rude. Like, like, you literally were slacking. But then again, you know, it was, it was Ron's the one with the broken wand. I don't know, that one seems like writing backwards from the punchline, really, because the point of that is to have some sort of repercussion of Ron breaking his wand. Um, so, I don't know, so you could argue that that scene, and then the other scenes that are already aforementioned, uh, set it up, but I don't think that's good enough. And, uh... And like I said, there's some ambiguity there, but the problem with most of that supposed setup is that it falls back on this trope that 
pretty much only exists in fiction, which is that, like, it, the if the guy picks on the girl, that means that he secretly likes her. And that's not... That's not really the case. Um, and I'm going to circle back to this, but I think part of this stems from, like, because this is, uh, you know, Jake, you know, like, this is things where, like, men and women get their wires crossed because we don't really understand each other sometimes, and I think this is just kind of one of these things. And I don't really know where the trope comes from because I feel like it's not really there in real life because like if it was if it was if it was teasing then probably but then that could also just be like signifying that you're part of the friend group because guys kind of rag on each other and it's meant you know and that's meant to display affection to each other uh So, I don't know, it's it's kind of one of those things where it's like, oh, if the guy's picking on the girl, it means he likes her, and it's like, well, I don't know, because he's like, Ron is straight up making her cry, and this happens multiple times. <laughs> so, I don't know about that. I don't know about that one. And then if you... Uh... If... Yeah, you know, they don't again, and like this falls into a problem where he's not really as as he's honestly less fleshed out than Hermione is overall. Like we spend most of the time with Harry, and that's uh, and from Harry's point of view and everything. And Ron is kind of just the the loyal pal who can be kind of a doofus, a little bit of a klutz or or boorish every now and you know that's. But he, we don't really get into to his head a lot, and I think that I think that the way that the actors talked about it, uh, Emma Watson and Rupert Grint, where they were like, they, I think that that I think that they're reflecting upon having to do that scene in the movie adaptation, I think that that basically sums up... I think that that basically sums up everything, because these, these three are not only portraying fictional friends, but because of that, and being on this close-knit cast and spending all this formative time together, they are real-life friends, or at least they were at that point. And so it was just like very, un it was uncomfortable because they had, they felt like, you know, they had, you know, they were, they spoke about this in, in interviews and stuff where they said it was kind of very awkward and uncomfortable because they had this very platonic sibling relationship because they were, had developed into close friends and it was kind of, so like even the people playing the characters thought it was a weird character position and felt uncomfortable because they had a and then they the, and then the three actors had basically this you know a, a real life equivalent of the friendship and so it it just kind of illustrates my if anything if anything if we're being realistic here if if Ron does like Hermione it wouldn't be reciprocated that's basically what it boils down to. So even, so even if you want to throw out everything else I said, there's no there, there's no reason for her to really be into him. I'll, you know, because the because there's a difference between like the bad boy attitude and the being a dick. And she just she seems to usually just perceive him as being a dick, and she also doesn't really respect his intelligence because she feels that it's you know there's a lack thereof. So so I don't know. Like it kind of I 
I guess maybe it's supposed to be there to illustrate that Harry really is out of touch with what's going on, because they have that moment where he just feels alone because he wakes up and it looks like they had been holding hands, and he's... You know, it's, it's one of those rare moments where he's like, well, shit, I kind of... I am kind of, like, isolated and not paying attention. But, um... I don't know, it always just felt strange to me. And I, I started with the weakest part of my argument first. It's gonna... It's gonna get more compelling as it goes along. Um... I just wanted to get that out of the way. The, uh... The thing is, though, is that Harry and Hermione spend a ton of time together, and it's very significant, both in terms of character development and and the overall story, and they're highly emotional uh, moments because of that, and it's during, like, very, the most dramatic points, and it's usually, you know, it's like, you know, he's, his supposed best friend is Ron, but all these, like, they go through all these significant life milestones. Him, you know, Harry and Hermione go, are the ones going through all these significant life milestones throughout the story. You know, in in the very first one, uh, she's, the, she's the one who, like, boosts him up, when has, like, right before that confrontation with what's-his-face with Voldemort growing out of the back of his head. And, um... Uh... And I, I recall, uh, in the film version, that's one of those things that, like, elicits, like, an awe kind of thing, because it's just a very sweet, touching kind of moment. And then they have the whole uh, time travel adventure in the third one. And, and that's just the two of them. And then... Um, and like I said, like my memory on this is kind of shoddy at this point. But, but then they, you know, they, they have, like, they basically do, like, the significant quest together in the in the, the final book and uh, you know it just seems like you know these kind of things like there it seems like they're have like I don't mean I mean intimate in the real version of the word I'm not using it as a euphemism they're the ones having the more intimate moments and I I feel like they would be, you know, they would be the ones growing close together. Because honestly, Ron kind of sits out on the sideline half the time, mostly because he just kind of he usually I guess he usually manages to get knocked out, or he'll like have a temper tantrum and just leave or something. But you know, just on generally based on my memory there. And then whatever Harry isn't doing with Hermione, he's usually doing by himself because he's just gone off and done shit by himself. So they're the ones, like, going through all the shit together. And, and it's very, you know, it's very personal shit. This is life and death. And it's like, you, I'm sure that, you know, well, it, it's probably the kind of thing that will be looked on by today's generation of TikTok people, as what, what you know, what they call trauma bonding or whatever. But uh, back in the day, you just used to call it building character. So, and that's how actual close relationships happen. So, I mean, if nothing else, the two of them are way better friends than Harry and Ron are. But I think that you know he basically spends no time with Ginny at all. And, like, literally at all. And so, and she's just introduced basically as, like, a kid who has a crush on him because he's basically their world's version of Justin Bieber. It's, you know, she just, you know, it's just a superficial kind of schoolgirl fan girl kind of crush thing. And then we're supposed to believe years down the line 
they they actually have some sort of meaningful relationship. And he doesn't even look at her like that because then he starts dating that Asian chick whose name I can't remember. And that's the, the you know that's the thing where it's like both Harry and Ron kind of start having relationships with girls that aren't Hermione, and she's kind of, like, pissed at both of them about it. Honestly. And so, that, like, I, she re, she reacts more to Ron's, I guess, because they have Harry, Harry observe that moment where he's, like, as the British say, snogging. But the, the you know, she's kind of, like, frosty towards Harry because of him dating what's her face as well so and then that kind of yeah you know, it just kind of goes nowhere um but it's kind of it's one of those things though where uh guys are not good at picking up signals so it is realistic that if Hermione liked either one of them, they wouldn't notice and would just pursue whatever girl threw, themself, threw herself at them. That's, that's, you know, that's realistic, but that's not, uh, uh, that's neither here nor there. Because, I don't know, it's just, they never, like, this is, this again shows the female mind, because there's never any part or Harry has any thoughts where he starts looking at Hermione differently. You know what I mean? And that would happen, because there, there's no way, if you're a straight guy, and you're friends with a straight girl, and then, you know, you you hit puberty or whatever, you, there's no way that you don't start thinking a little differently about her. And there's no such thing as, like, just a platonic guy friend. And I hate to break it to you, any ladies that are listening, but if you're straight and you have straight male friends and you're just, and you think that they're just friends, and that's you know that's one side of it. that's you considering them just friends. They're waiting in the wings for you to finally uh, you know give some sort of green light that, and then their unrequited feelings that they've been harboring. You know, they can finally confess that or whatever. So, that's again, like, there, there was never, there is not any moments where Harry kind of, like, it's like, you know, oh, gee, you know, like, no. oh, hang, well, he's British. Uh, oh, tiddlywinks, Hermione is looking rather smashing, pip, pip. Cheerio, eh, what? She's, she's looking around the choose, Jay. No. Um, you know, notice how they all have, like, even Ron is supposed to be, like, the lower class one. They all have nice accents. None of them are, none of them are Scousers, none of them are Cockney. It's British racism at work. They're version of racism of white people are better than other types of white people. <laughs> but, um... Oh, yeah, no, the only one who has, like, a kind of bummy accent is Hagrid. But, you know, he's Hagrid. That's the one where you'd expect it. But, like, Harry's supposed to be poor. Ron's supposed to be, like, basically, like, a Depression-era child. I keep losing the thread. This is why. This is what I mean. Is that it's a rant. It's not organized. Uh, that's why I picked this subject. Is that I don't. I'm not embarrassed about it on this subject. Um, yeah. So then we're so. Because the only thing more out of left field than Ron and Hermione getting together is Harry and Ginny getting together. Because again, that's based on absolutely nothing. That has nothing to it. To, to Harry, this is just my friend's kid sister who's 
making Google eyes at me because I'm famous and it's kind of just, you know, he's, it's just an awkward kind of thing. And then, like, he's actually going to legitimately pursue her. And first, like, and she doesn't grow out of it. Like, this is years later by the time the seventh book rolls around. She's not even really in that either. It just kind of, like, becomes this thing when we flash forward to them being adults. And it's just, if anything, if you want to, if you want to, you know, die on the hill that Ron and Hermione make sense, and, uh, you know, it's not like you have no case to be made, but the the Harry and Ginny thing, absolutely fucking no way. And if you don't believe me, if for... N- no other reason. If you f- if you're sitting here thinking yourself, oh well, but no, no, there's no justification that that would ever happen in real life. If for no other reason, then Ron would not let that happen. Like, are you kidding? Me? Like, like two bros, these you know these two dude best friends, and they're like, and one is just like, hey, bro, I, uh, I'm a, I'm a. I'm gonna bang your little sister. I'm I'm into her. She's looking like a snack. Like no, like that's friendship ending, and hands are getting thrown. Like no, no older brother is gonna let his best friend get with his sister. That's not a thing that happens. That's that's you know that's to go after your best friend's little sister romantically is a violation of the bro code that's that will never happen like ron would beat the fuck out of harry if he thought that he was making any towards of advances towards her so that's you know again and so this this all comes full circle to something that i said before which is this is this is a product of the female mind not comprehending the male mind and vice versa um So, you know, J.K. Rowling doesn't understand that, like, you know, it's only women who see friends of the opposite sex platonically. Men are, just cannot. They'll even if they try, they just can't help it. It's not possible for a, a man to have a girlfriend, you know, a friend who's a a platonic friend who's a girl, and not have some sort of interest in them. That is literally not possible. So that's why, you know, it kind of rings a little weird. You know, because, you know, that would be the justification for why Hermione doesn't show any interest in Harry because women do that thing. They're like, oh, that's just my friend. But it doesn't make any sense that Harry wouldn't kind of look at her in a new way. Um,. And, uh, you know, that, and that you don't date your friend's sister. That's, that's bro code violation. So, I don't think I left anything out. I think that's pretty much what I wanted to do, address as far as that goes. Uh, so I guess to summarize, I'll, I'll try to summarize it. I said that it was mess. So it's. So, it makes more sense for Harry and Hermione to be the ones to get together because they develop as characters together. They have this significant story moments together and have, like, legitimate and intimate bonding because of what they're going through. Um, it, uh, her gang with Ron kind of has that trope of, like, oh, if the guy's picking on the girl... That means that he likes her, and then for some reason she reciprocally with that. And that's the one part where, like, we were talking about men and women don't understand each other. This is where that theory uh, kind of has a has a hole in it, because I don't understand... Because, it, because J.K. Rowling as a woman should know that Hermione would not be into that. Because, like I said, there's a difference between, like, someone kind of being a, a bad boy, you know, when that's that kind of thing, and someone, like, belittling you. And 
And there's also the difference between, you know, because like, because that's the that's the issue is that that's why they have the conflict is that Hermione, like, you know, at at the very least, Ron is just trying to tease her because he sees her as one of the bros, but Hermione just perceives it as legitimate attacks, and that's that's very accurate to win. But um, so but then. Of course, why would she then be attracted to you? I, I guess, you know, there's also an element where I suppose, like, we're supposed to take it that it's not, it's not merely, you know, you know, some of the reason for him making these comments is supposed to be, is supposed to show that he's, like, jealous, but uh, jealousy is not an attractive look on a man. To a woman, and then, uh, and then the, the like Ginny is basically just not a character at all. She barely like yeah, he rescues her, but it's because she got kidnapped by a fucking monster. Like she, he's not, she's not the only person that Harry rescues from the machinations of Voldemort. And again, like, and like, you know, how much younger is she than, like, you know, like when she first shows up in that second, and she's, what is she, you know, she's a, you know, like, a, I guess if she's in the second one, then I guess they're, does that mean that they're only a year apart? So my, my memory of it was that, like, he goes over to her. Maybe it was the first, but he, in any, like, there was, uh, there was a scene where Harry visits the Weasley household, and then Ginny is, like, literally a little girl, and is, like, like, all kind of giggly and shit, because, you know, Harry's a celebrity, you know, but it's, like, there's, there's, there's nothing, there's nothing to that, there's nothing there. And it would never be allowed to happen because it's a viol it's a friendship ending and fisticuff starting violation of the bro code to date your buddy's sister. Like like he does like that's not something where he signs off on that. Where he's like, Hey bro, you know, we're such good friends. Why don't you date me? Why don't you have why don't you have my sister? Here. Go on, you you get you get first dibs because you're my bro. Like, no, that's no, that doesn't happen. <laughs> that's not. That's not okay. Um. So I think, I think it would have been. It would have made more sense. Both, well, at least I don't know. You, your mileage may vary on this, but it makes sense to me on like an actual human psychology level that Harry and Hermione would get together over Ron and Hermione. But if you take issue with that. Then at the very least, I want to present the argument that narratively it makes more sense that Harry and Hermione get together because I don't think that there's sufficient groundwork laid um, for what actually transpires. You know, it should have been. You know, I don't know what the fuck happens with Ginny. She, you know, she does her own life or whatever, and then. Um, You know, and then Harry and Hermione getting the little seems like the, I mean, I know matters of the heart are not logical, but that seems to be the logical step. And then, <laughs> it's just the thing that seems to make sense. And then I don't know who you put Ron with, like, lo Looney Luna or whatever. I don't know, again, like, that's kind of not very material because... Out of, out of the three characters, there's three supposedly main characters... Uh, you know, Harry, you know, Harry is kind of like 95% of the thing, and then Hermione is like, you know, sick, she, she's like 7%, and then Ron is the remaining three, <laughs> and that's the percentage of the trio, really, so it's like he's... He's the one who gets the least emphasis throughout all seven of the books and whatnot, so I don't see it as particularly mattering who he gets to go to.
Hell, you know, something like maybe like maybe her mind doesn't get together with any of them because of that thing where she friend zones both of them because that's what girls tend to do. And like, what if she just ends up with like Neville Longbottom? She's like, yeah, his bottom is long, but he leaves my bottom sore.